I saw this Houdini really mesh growth effect on Instagram which I thought was very cool so I tried to create a similar effect in geometry nodes. So let's see how can we create this effect in Blender. So first let me show you a little summary of the nodes and you'll start building the effect from scratch. You can see if I play with this map node, the geometry is growing and making this part of the watch. So what I did here is we have an input which is our 3D model. You can get any 3D model but uh, clean geometry is very important for this. Then we're gonna distribute points in the volume of this mesh. So just like that convert all the points to the volume so we converted the volume back to mesh and then we set the position of it and transfer the attributes from this mesh because uh, right here you can see it's very randomized so after setting the position it's normal now added a subdivision and materials stuff like that and that's pretty much it i did output one attribute from here which was used later for the glass material you can see this is the glass and this is the metal which looks quite cool with the shading so let's create this from scratch now what i'm gonna do is just gonna add a new geometry nodes modifier and here rename it to the growth effect first step was to distribute points in a volume so let's do that for that i'm gonna add a mesh line mesh line and i'm gonna set it to endpoints and the z to zero everything should be zero here and after that i'm gonna add a mesh to points node to convert these to points and then after these let's add a set position node and then i'm gonna add a bounding box node bounding box then add a random value node set this random value to vector and minimum to minimum maximum to maximum then connect the value to the position and preview that so it looks like that now I'm gonna bring up the count so we can see it and now we're gonna delete some of these points so add a delete geometry node delete geometry and put it right here then I'm gonna add a ray cast node and connect that to the target geometry in the ray direction I'm gonna add a position node and connect it right here and then we're gonna get the hit normal and add a vector math here vector math and set this to dot product then we're gonna get this dot product and connect that to the selection get this position again and connect it to the dot product right here then it's kind of inverted so i'm gonna add a boolean math this is a great way to invert float values and i'm gonna set this to not so it's inverted now so pretty much our instancing inside a volume is done and i'm gonna select all of these nodes and hit ctrl g to group that and now these both are coming to one geometry so i'm gonna remove the second socket and hit n go to group and select that one and remove it now go inside that group and connect the seed to the black dot right here so we can control the seed a random value here in the count i'm gonna add a math node and multiply this with something like 50 and then get the value and connect it to the black dot right here this is our density so i'm gonna hit n and right here in this value you know double click it and rename it to density and this is it we have the seed and we have the density and we want some bigger density here just like 300 would be enough now point distribution inside a volume is done now next step is to convert these points to volume so add a points to volume node this radius value is gonna give us our whole effect so we're gonna play with that later then after that add a volume to mesh node pretty simple stuff and it's looking very fat but we're gonna fix that soon so don't worry about that and we want to create the effect using a proximity and how will we do that we will control the radius here with a proximity which is very simple so let me show you how to do that in the radius i'm gonna add a map range and just put it right here i'm gonna bring the 2 max value down a little bit now what we need to do is first pin this so if i add another object it's not gonna uh, 
hide my geometry in our street. I'm gonna add an icon sphere here and hit down into the edit mode and empty merge everything at center. Now this is gonna be our control point because if you choose like uh, the whole icon sphere, the gradient is not gonna work perfectly fine. It always just uh, works in a bad way. So I like to merge everything at center. Grab this vertex to Y axis just to like that. Unimport this icon sphere into the geometry nodes. Select relative and in the geometry I'm gonna add a proximity node. Geometry proximity. Connect the distance to the value. Now everything just disappeared because uh, we gotta play with the map range a little bit. So bring this to maximum value up to 1 and yeah, this disappeared because of the uh, proximity is set to faces. You can see we have points, everything is points, you cannot see any face here. Then why would we select faces here? We should select points and prove that. Oh, still looks very fat. I'm gonna play with this map range, so just like that. Then in the middle here, to animate the whole thing, like uh, to add keyframes, I'm gonna add a math node here. And we're gonna be animating this value for the whole effect, just like that. So set up the map range as you like it, I'm gonna play with the values. I'm gonna leave it like that. And here in the volume to mesh node, I'm gonna set this to size so I have a better control over the voxel size. And please do not go crazy with the voxel size because it can really slow down your computer. So I'm gonna go with something like 0 0.07. In the voxel amount, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. Now with that done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a set position node because this doesn't look like this kind of smooth mesh. We want it to be smooth and duplicate this group input right here. In the geometry, I'm gonna add an attribute node, transfer attribute. We're transferring the position of these vertices to these vertices. Like, yeah, it's basically just like a shrink wrap. Now in the float, I'm gonna set this to vector because this is a vector. And in the attribute, I'm gonna set this to position, add a position node, and then connect this to the position. So it sort of gets the shape of our, our model. Now I can bring this thickness down a little bit if I want to. And this one too, just like that, bring it down a little bit and then preview the whole thing. After that, I'm gonna add a subdivisional surface to make it smoother and then I'm gonna add a set shade smooth node and this is looking very good. Then I'm gonna add a set material node to add materials, but this is later so. Now, this is not done yet. This set position node basically um, just shrink wrapped everything on this mesh and I don't want that. I want these edges to be displaced a little bit and a little bit random and these to be very flat as this mesh. So to keep these edges displaced, what we need to do is we need to use our proximity to determine which areas are not displaced by this transfer attribute. So I'm gonna add a mix RGB here and in the color tool I'm gonna add its own position. So it's kinda uh, transforming between these two and we can use uh, any vector, any float for this factor now. So I'm gonna add a map range for this one because this is what I always use to control values. And then I'm gonna connect this add to the value right here. Now play with the map range until you get the result that you want. So uh, I can show you all the nodes here but you have to set the map range yourself because I don't know what your models and your scenes look like. Like everything, you need to figure that out yourself and, and you can play with this one too. And then finally we will animate the this add value right here for the whole effect. So set this voxel size to 0 0.05 and so these are the values of this color ramp and these looks like that. Now to animate this I'm gonna add a timeline here. So hit L for the timeline. L is the shortcut for the timeline. X delete keyframes. And in the frame one I'm gonna... You can also just uh, in, select this icon, icosphere and 
bring it back or forward to animate this but I won't suggest that because it's just a word text and you won't see it clearly. Select this math node and bring the value back just like that and hit I for a keyframe. And I'm gonna set the end frame to 120 and bring this value down just like that until it fills it out. I to insert another keyframe. And if you play this, it looks like that. Now right here we wanna do some uh, shading. So in the set material node, select your material, right? And then get this map range and connect it to the black dot in the group output. And in the output attributes, here is a result. I'm gonna s just give it any alphabet you want. I'm gonna give it a V here and click this button. Then go to the shader editor and select your material. Added a little bit of shading here with the roughness. This is not important. The important step is to... Yeah, I'll just do it again. I don't know, I'll just do it again. I'm gonna delete that and add a principal BSDF. Yeah, just leave it. Now your scene should look like that. I'm gonna add a mix shader here and another glass BSDF. Bring up the roughness just a little bit for the glass. Not much, just a little bit. And in the color, base color of that, I'm gonna bring it down to gray. Bring down the roughness a little bit, make it metallic. And in the factor, we're gonna add an attribute. And you can see here we outputted a V here. I'm just gonna add V right here. And now if you go to the shading tab, it looks like that. Yeah, we got our gradient uh, in the shading tab, which is very cool. And we're controlling our glass shader with it. So if you play it, it's gonna look like that. Go to the rendered view. You can play with the values and make it better. I just did it very to just show you how it was done. And if you want to get this project file, it's available it's available on Patreon and this is the best way to support this channel. So, yeah, that's it for today and I'll see you in the next one.